We forgot about that day. Or we forgot about the day that children will be running away from their parents and parents also are running away from their kids because of the shortcoming of our family responsibility in this dunya. And we try to escape the blame on that day, but we cannot. How can we forget all of that? Simply because the person did not take it seriously. We forget about the sirat. Wa siratun man yaqa an haddihi fa ila khizyin wa wilin wa nasab. The sirat now you can decide to go on a car, take your way to a haram place and use your car on your road. But on the judgment day, we will go through the sirat. And everyone will have to cross it. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْدِيًّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِي حَيْبِثِيًّا Everyone has to cross it. And the people who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and led a righteous life, they will be saved and they will cross it in an easy way. And what is hard on that sirat is that the more sinful we are in our life, the more heavy we will be on that sirat. And we are not allowed to fall off it. If we fall off the sirat, we go to Jahannam. But the only way to be able to cross it is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now and live our life according to Islam. That was about death, reminding us then, if that is a fact, we have to prepare now in this dunya. And when we make a judgment, we take our judgment from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we live our social life, we live our social life according to the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all mankind. And when we behave and we dress and we mix, we do it according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we believe and have faith, we have to adapt the true faith. That will save us in uh, dunya and akhirah. In another word, there is a lot of jahiliya or an Islamic life that we go through every day. But we want to live today, inshallah, with the four jahiliya that has been mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say about jahiliya, it means ignorance. And ignorance means when I live my life, not the way I have been told by my Lord to live. When I do what I do, not the way I have been told by my Lord to do it. In another way, when I follow my Lord's desire and ignore the ultimate law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the jahiliya in the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is hukmu di jahiliya. Welcome to the judgment and how to live our life. Every believer should know that. <laughs> We have been told what to do already and how to live our life. And if anything happens, we just need to find out what is the hukum and what is the legislation and the law and the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the issues that we are facing in our life. It's not up to mankind to decide. It's not up to any law to review it or change it. It is divine law revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُقِنُونَ Do you want to go back to the hukum of the jahiliyyah? The hukum that it does not base on the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is better law than the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the people of the yaqeen, people who believe that whatever we do, we will go back to Allah and He is the one who will judge us finally. So there is one thing, and we have to be very careful in our lifetime, especially when we live in a society that they don't apply the law of God. They don't apply the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They leave it to the person's will or the state's will. And to the person's will, we have to write it down. What needs to be done, for example, in our family problems. Who should be the judge between me and my wife, between me and my husband, between me and my brother, and so on? It is written in the, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and explained by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and we don't need to go any further, believing that I can 
pay a lawyer or can be supplied by a lawyer to help me knowing that I'm wrong but use a man-made law to talk somebody else's right in this dunya. Ha antum ula, ha antum ha ula, jadaltum anhum fil hayati dunya. Faman yujadilullah anhum yawm al-qiyama, amman yakunu alayhi wakila. These people you could defend them with your knowledge or your certificate or your diploma and you defend them in this dunya and you accept that judgment who will defend you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a believer has to be very careful otherwise it is not the final court in this dunya. The one the Prophet alayhi salatu wa said to the sahaba one day, two of you may have a problem and come to me and I will listen to everyone what you say and judge based on what I have heard. But you know the truth in your inner self. If I judge for you and you know that that is not right, you better give it back. Before a day comes that you have no more chance to give the money or anything else back, you will pay from your good days on the judgment day. This is the hukum or the law of the jahiliya, the an Islamic law. Another jahiliya that men can go through in the past, you can imagine in the past, when the Prophet alayhi salatu was telling mankind how to live their life. And some of them said, with proud and no fear, وَإِذْ قَالُوا اللَّهُمَّ إِنْ كَانَ هَذَا هُوَ الْحَقَّ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ فَأَمْتِلَ عَلَيْنَا حِجَارَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءَ أَوْ إِتِنَا بِعَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ that what they said, challenge openly. And they said, oh God, if this is the truth from you, if the Quran is the truth, and Islam is the truth, and Muhammad alayhi salatu is the right man we have to follow, if that is the case, we are ready for any type of punishment you will punish us. It means they're saying that we will not accept it. And if you want, send down rain made out of stones and rocks on us. That's what they said. They used to be that fanatic and they believe in their nationalism and that they believe. And it has been repeated even nowadays. If they said this long time ago, on the days of the first Jahiliya, the first ignorance, some people still repeat it today. In Africa, in Arabia, in India, in everywhere. And what they say, some Africans, they say that God is black. And only the black people are the true believers. Any other person with different color, they follow the shaitan and the devil. That is Africanism, what they call it. And some people say, Amantu bil ba'ati rabban la sharika lahu wa bil urubati dinan ma lahu thani. Say he believed in al a political party that is the only God who is no partner. And he believed that the only religion he believed in is the Arabism or the Africanism or any other country or blood that Thai people and make them ignore Islam. And another one say, Habu niya aidan, yaj'al la urba ummatan, wasiru bi jutmani ala jini burhami, salamun ala kufrin, yuwahidu baynana, wa ahlan wa sahlan ba'dahu bi jahannani. Anything to make us together as Arabs or Africans or Indian or anything, we welcome it. And when we die, you do to our body whatever you want. You take it to any place, under any logo, doesn't matter. That's what they say. And they welcome kufr, even if they have to become perfect in order to be united. As one country people, they accept that and they don't care what happens after that, even if they have to go to Jahannam. The way the first Jahiliya said it. If that is the truth, send rain of rocks on us. This is the human mind. When they always claim that you don't need the divine religion and divine law, go back to the main level of the human mind. What mind they are talking about? Is it the, the mind that will take people into something wrong just because other people are doing it? The mind of Gandhi when he said, when he said that, Ana indama ara al Bakara, la ajiduni ara hayawana, ni anni abudu al Bakara, wasauda fiyo, amama la alam al Ashma, ani ibadatu al Bakara. That's what he said. In the Marayin al Hulud, yet 
يتجهون للبقرة بلا عبادة والإجلال وأنا واحد من هؤلاء الملايين. That what Gandhi said when he watch he sees a cow it doesn't look like a cow to him it look like a god because he worships a cow and he will defend by all means even if it will cost him his life he will defend that religion in front of the entire universe <coughs> without thinking and he said millions of the indian they face the cow when they pray and they glorify it and i am one of these millions this is a human mind. The human mind of the Greeks who used to defend prostitution and immorality. And they draw the pictures of the prophets naked and draw men naked and women naked in the house of worship. That is a human mind. The human mind of China, the Confucius, who used to kill and sacrifice blood for the sun and the moon and the stars and the mountains and the clouds and the spirit of the ancestors. This is a human mind. Who are saying that the religion of Islam is not fair. How come they call God as a man? How come they call God as a man? They refer to who are not here. That is a human mind. Take people go astray. It is the Asadiya of the Jahiliya. They want to bring the religion down to cities suit their needs and they don't want to grow up. It is part of the Jahiliya and that hurt the Muslim Ummah and we can see the result. Since we don't call each other or a nation of Islam and we go into the nationalism, what happened? We can see the result. Wala tanazaw, patafshalu, watad habari Do not argue among yourself with different isms. If you do that, you will fail and your power will go and we can see it. Other nations can decide to have breakfast in Baghdad and have lunch in Kabul and Afghanistan and have their dinner in Palestine and they do what they want. And we have seen what they have done and do every day. Why? Because the Muslims now they rely on the nationalism. And they throw Islam away. The flag of Islam does unite all human society to save the Muslims and the non-Muslims. The religion, religion that make responsible on itself to make sure that the non-Muslims are safe and the places of their worships are safe. Allah said that these are talking about if not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use mankind against mankind, use the good people against the bad people. What will happen? Many people will go out there and destroy the churches and burn it down and the synagogues and the temples. But that's not allowed in Islam. But only when Islam comes to the leadership of the kind, every human being will live in peace. And they will be told, Lakum dinukum This is Islam. It is your right to know. But if you don't want to become a Muslim, the Muslims will never judge you. But remember, how did you come into this world? Not the Muslims brought you into this world and they will not take you out of this world. They have no right to start your life or end it. It is the one who sent you out into this world who will call you back and judge you, not the Muslims. And the Prophet wasalam, said, Innama bu'aytum du'atan la fudatan. You have been sent out for mankind, for their welfare and well being, not to judge them, but teach them and share with them whatever you can. But due to the Gehiliya, the nationalism made people apart and people only believe in their kind. And we can see that everywhere in the Masajid and in the gathering, people not only link to their kind and not fail for the rest of non-Muslims who want to know what unites the Muslims. It is the Quran and the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad It is time to let the Gehiliya go and we don't want it to come. We have seen how we have been victimized just due to adapting that as a pay, as a religion. Islam is our father, and Islam is our, the thing that will unite all human society. Islam will link us to every Muslim and remind us that if others are not Muslims, they are your brothers and sisters in, the, in humanity. And the Prophet was sent as a mercy for all human society. 
وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. So let us let the jihadiyya go and see each other as Muslims and human beings. That's what we have been told to do in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another jihadiyya in the Holy Quran is the jihadiyya tabarrud. Wala tabarradna. Tabarrud al jihadiyya tabarrud. And what is tabarrud? A tabarrud huwa idharu ma khafiya min zira til ma'ati li ghayri zawjiha aw li mahari. It is when a woman display what she supposed not to display from her body, what she supposed to display only to the husband and the blood and relatives. <laughs> Outsiders are not allowed to see that part of her body. And we all know it when we talk about a bundle of their area. It is to do with the way we dress as men and women. We know what to dress, we call that our. And that is applying when we are facing the society or we are meeting, meeting people who they are not allowed to see certain parts of our body. And this law is from, not from anyone, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we read the Quran and the practical life of the true Muslim society, we see that is happening. We see that in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba and, the, and so on. And all the true scholars of Islam, they repeat it every time. All Muslim women, you are not allowed to show any part of your body except your face and your two palms. And some say, even the face and your two palms, when there is a fitna, you must cover that. And when you go back to a personal reading, you will see the details. The issue between covering the whole body or you are allowed to let the face be seen and the two palms. Between these. Nothing more than that. But we can see what is happening today. And we need to focus on this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us moments of purification. A spiritual moment that at least remember. The course of Ramadan, 30 days course that we go through in order for us, la anna If you go through this course, you may end up being someone who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way you dress, in the way you behave, and so on. And we are on the doors of Ramadan. If it is written that we will make it, some of us may not make it, we don't know. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us make it. In case we didn't do the other Ramadan properly, inshallah we will do that one properly in every aspect as a Muslim. And we can see we have a target together. And we all know any individual person, as a husband, or brother, or father, we know that what you are doing is wrong. And what is that? The Tabarruz al when you have a free mix between men and women, in the holiest month of the year, in the holy place of the Ibadah, yet we let it go. But we believe we should learn before the chance of learning is taken over. So when we talk about hijab, not only to do with the clothing, and we can see the clothing today. In the new fashion, the clothing or the hijab of Hollywood, we can say it. When the women go out now with a very, very tight cloth, with a supposed to put that to sleep, not to go outside. And we can see the hadith of the Prophet when he said, you will follow the way of life of the non-Muslims step by step. To the extent that you will do everything they do. Even in our ibadah, when we are dressing the hijab, it is very tight. And a young man is ashamed even to look at that. Even non-Muslims, they wonder what happened to women in the society. Especially to the Muslim women who support to, to lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know what we are talking about. But at least, when we are in a holy man, what we can do? We talk to ourselves, the personal responsibility. I am a man. I know my place in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm a woman. I know my place in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ramadan. When I am punishing my body with thirst and hunger. But shaitan play games from the other side. And we know what we are talking about. We meet together here and many women with no teacher. And when we say this is haram, you will be named a fundamentalist. And when as a people individually, what is the hukum of Allah in it, we all know. 
But we have been told, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الْذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, because reminding is useful for the believers, only the believers. If someone has no iman, reminding will be useless to them. And that's why we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us heart that accepts the truth. Otherwise, it doesn't wait maybe. It is tabarruz al jahiliya. And we have to prepare ourselves individually. I'm not talking about our social life, but as an individual human being, at least we have to know where I belong to when we are sitting down. Women, when they're supposed to be, even in the moment of the salat, when we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even at that moment, Islam told us men and women have to be separated. And women at the back and the men in the front, and we lower our gaze. And if the Imam make a mistake, women don't talk. Don't even say, Subhanallah, just clap your hand. This is our duty during the holiest ibadah in our life, in the salah. What about when we sit together face to face and laughing? And some even laughing loud to the extreme that they don't remember. If you don't remember this moment, when you're supposed to lower our voice and we make it that loud, in front of the non mahram what will happen? When we are dying, we may cry very loud because we export, expose our body, our voice, and everything it starts to entertain, entertain other people in the month of Ramadan. And we know how proud it is. It is every father, every husband responsibility to remind our sisters, our wives, where are you going? Is it for ibadah or for entertainment? At least save the people who want to increase our iman in Ramadan. Don't bear, don't take it away, please. And if we cannot be alive in the month of Ramadan, and the Jahiliya is there in that month, what else can we do? And what else can change our mind? We take this as individual responsibility and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna rabba kana bin min salt. He's watching everybody, and we have only one chance in this life. Do whatever you want to do, with that you will be rewarded or punished. It is a jahiliya. Nothing to do only with the way we dress, but to do with the way we behave, the way how far we can go into each other. Even in the class of learning, what is the Islamic mixing, we need to find out all of that, and we know. But take it individually, we are responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why you polluted many women's heart or many men's heart due to the way you behave or the way you dressed in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a jahiliya. Even if you call it civilization and progress, in the name of civilization, we are starting to accuse the religion with fundamentalism. And it's very simple. We just ask ourselves in, in our death, what is the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we know it, we say it. If we don't know it, we should never talk about Islam without knowledge. Wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilm inna sama wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ula'ita kana amku mas'ula. We have to be very careful, especially when we teach. We have no right to teach any human about Islam unless we are sure this is Islam from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and the explanation and the ishtihad of the considered ulama. Otherwise, we are misguiding mankind. And we have so many examples in our life. I was dealing with a family last week when I went to Sydney. About this family, they had a new Muslim in the family. A man who became a Muslim and married a Muslim woman in order that he will learn more about Islam. And that man not seeing the proper Islam because this woman has something they call it a tariq. After every salah, sits there about half an hour and keeps saying Allah, 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 Allah. And the man gets confused. When I go to the masjid, it is different. I read the books, it's different. And I was telling that woman honestly. This man said to me, he ran away from Christianity because everyone had a different sin. And he wants to use his own head to think. What is the truth? And he came to him his, into Islam. If you teach him that he has a right to know, simply ask anyone, 
What did the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, what type of thing he used to do after the salat? And you have to answer. If you don't know it, don't say it. But you cannot fabricate something. There is only one tariqah to be accepted. And what is that? قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ The Prophet was told to turn all mankind. There is only one way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that way? Come from behind the Prophet This is his way to Allah. And anyone who love him or follow him, any other path will take the people to what? وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ He will take you to astray. Go away from the Jahiliyyah. It is our right to know truly what was divine. No confusion in it at all. And we have to be the bodyguard of Islam. Anything we learn, ask the people. Do we have, do we have a proof for that? If you don't have a proof, it may be your culture. Or somebody else's. And I don't want to follow my culture. It is wrong, and Islam came to fix that for us. Tell me what is Islam, this is the issue, what the Quran said about it, and what the Hadith said, and what the ulama, who will the ulama say? If they don't know that, don't follow them. Because many people, they love Allah, and they go to Jahannam. Why? There is a difference between I love Allah, and I do what Allah loves. And they love Allah, and they worship Him with jahiliya, with ignorance. They love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and they didn't treat him as a prophet, but treat him as a god. They love Isa alayhi salam, and they treat him not like a prophet, like a god. And they love so many things, and they went astray. So love doesn't mean anything until we do what who we love wants us to do. And in order to know that, we follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Remember this Jahiliya, welcome to the law, and as a tribalism, it is a Jahiliya, and the way we behave and the way we dress. And if Allah extends our life to next Friday, inshallah, we can continue with the four Jahiliya, which is mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Hakim, wa ja'alana wa iyaakum na al-Nabiyyina istanibu wa al-Qur'an al-Tabi'u al-Asana, aqulu qawli ha'ala wa sarsalu muhani wa lakum, wa sarsaluku inna fi umar al-Qur'an al-Rakim. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear Muslims, I will say it in the, in the form of announcement as you can see the world outside it is a chance for us to buy paradise again we have been building a lot of things in our life. But we have been told the only thing that we will build, and Allah will build something for you in paradise, is a masjid. And you can see the missionary, the machine outside there, it is a beginning now. And this is a time when we will deposit our money in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He will give it back to us when we really need it. On a day that we will wish, I wish I gave all my money away because. The only benefit of that money in this dunya is to please Allah. On the judgment day, that money becomes useless. The only way to make it used is to make it now. And you can see that if you build a house for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he will build a house for you. And we know how difficult it is to build a house. How to build a mosque individually, very difficult. But we can do it together. And we ask Allah to take us together to paradise because we built a mosque for you for to worship you in this place. And this is the best thing we can build in the city of Canberra. The holiest place on that city is the masjid. And that is the best we can do now. And we don't need to make any comments. What you see will be the real message to you. And we have the chance to do it now. Allahumma qafir bin muslimina wa muslima 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 اللهم أحسن ختامنا وأقيمنا من الدنيا والدين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة